I am in Aztec, New Mexico at the Aztec Ruins National Monument. Now uh, these are not ruins of the Aztecs. We're a little north for that, but these are some very old Puebloan ruins and this is going to be really cool. So let's go check this out. Aztec Ruins National Monument was established in 1923, so it's a fairly old national park site. This is the Puebloan style visitor center in front of the Aztec Ruins, and it's unfortunately closed right now due to COVID-19. Aztec Ruins is a UNESCO World Heritage Site along with nearby Chaco Canyon, one of only 22 sites in the country, even though the US technically pulled out of UNESCO a few years ago. While the visitor center exhibits are closed, of course the gift shop is available, and luckily the restrooms are open as well. Because of the pandemic, they have an outdoor ranger stand. There are also some lovely wildflowers alongside the trail to the historic ruins. Alright, here are the Aztec ruins. Currently you can only walk one way on the trail, no backtracking, in order to keep distance from others. From my understanding, these Puebloan ruins were called the Aztec ruins in the 19th century by white American settlers who did believe this was Aztec territory and that the mighty Aztecs built all this. They were actually much farther south of here in Mexico, but the name stuck. This is the Great Kiva. Well, a reconstruction of the Great Kiva since there was hardly anything left by the 1900s. This grand subterranean circular structure was used for the community's most important events, such as political meetings and religious ceremonies. There's an open air skylight at the center, directly above the center floor vault. Archaeologists don't really know what these floor vaults were for. There are several windows which peer into the antechamber from smaller rooms. This pillar shows the stone and wood layering of the pillars. And underneath this one, the remains of the original pillar are visible. This is actually the largest reconstruction of a kiva in North America. And I must say it is really impressive. This thing here is an altar. The paint job is believed to be accurate and those burnt poles on it were from the original altar that was right here. That was really cool. The Great Kiva alone is worth a visit here. Now onto the rest of Aztec ruins. Beyond the Great Kiva, the massive ruins of an ancient society come into view. The complex is very expansive. This place really is unbelievable. This here is an original, smaller kiva site. Oftentimes, Puebloan settlements had several kivas, so here are the remains of a fairly large one, but this one was not as big nor as important as the Great Kiva, which is fully reconstructed just feet away. One can imagine what this ruined kiva looked like since there is a full reconstruction of what they actually looked like 900 years ago. The Puebloans who originally settled here began constructing this planned community at what would become Aztec around the late 10 hundreds, nearly a thousand years ago. This site is located near the Animas River, so they had a constant water supply and could maintain a food source at this one location. So by the river there was some farming going on. This was a planned community, set up in this present configuration on purpose. 
as these big multi-level structures served a variety of purposes, whether they contained kivas for meetings or ceremony, or various other rooms and sections for trade and living spaces. The people here at Aztec frequently traded with the Puebloans at Chaco Canyon, about 70 miles south of here. That site is very important and is also now an amazing national park unit. The Chaco culture there was the big deal in the Four Corners region around 1100, so they had a lot of influence here at Aztec. This community was bustling for over two centuries into the 1200s, as the people here farmed and trade without much tribal warfare or significant droughts. I do want to emphasize that their ideal of community was important in the design of this place. Everything about these structures was designed to flow together and keep things relatively communal. The walls are made up of local adobe mud, and as for the roof, they made it out of various types of trees in the region, some of which they had to get from the nearby La Plata Mountains. There's still some original vigas on this structure. That piece of wood has weathered centuries here. The West Ruin, which is what this humongous structure is called, is 30 feet tall in some areas. Visitors can actually crawl through these original doors. They're very low to the ground and are not made for the taller modern man. Many of the doors and windows are topped by their original beams made of spruce, aspen, or pine. And here you can actually walk through a part of the structure that has fully survived. There's the original wooden ceiling intact with its beams and a seemingly endless corridor of rooms that would have served various functions for administration and other uses. This whole structure was public to my understanding. Looking out this window, or maybe it was a door, into an open air space. I don't know if this was originally open air, but that's pretty neat. These rooms are pretty small. There's low hanging doors and the floors are just sand. There are actually over 400 interconnected rooms like this within this structure throughout its three floors. This is only one portion of it. Wow, walking through this original section of the 900 year old ruin was awesome. These are some of the oldest standing rooms in America right here. That corridor exits into the back side of the West Ruin, and there's a big wall that allows one to really appreciate how large this place is. There are also some more modern vigas which serve as rain gutters. There's some native flora growing behind the ruins. Looking at it from the back here gives a perspective on the sheer size of these ruins. I am totally blown away with this place. Right behind the main ruins is the Hubbard site. This is another big kiva, and it's unusual because it's a triwall kiva. There are three walls surrounding the kiva antechamber. Archaeologists are not sure exactly what that meant, but I guess it makes it special.
Around 1150, Chaco Canyon was largely abandoned, and by about 1300, the ancestral Puebloan people here at Aztec also left the region as part of the mass exodus of the Puebloan people around the Four Corners. There is believed to have been a long and severe drought during that time. There was also a depletion of resources and some social changes that caused the people to leave their planned community oases here and scatter elsewhere. In 1916, archaeologist Earl Morris was sponsored by the American Museum of Natural History, which is a wonderful museum by the way, to excavate and research the Aztec ruins, and he later went on to build the reconstruction of the Great Kiva based on his evidence. It was during this time that this was declared a national monument to be preserved for all time. There's a Pueblo and grindstone or mano sitting out here. Even up here on the second story of the ruins, they built kivas into it. There's quite a few kivas here, so they must have had a lot of business to do. And this is where the Aztec Ruins trail loop comes full circle. The Aztec Ruins are plain and simply amazing. Certainly one of the best ancient Puebloan sites in the nation. I will be returning here because first off it's awesome and also because I want to see the visitor center and I'd highly recommend you make the trip out yourself. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and take a look at my other videos on Puebloan history here in the Four Corners region, as well as videos at other national parks, historic sites, and more. Thanks for watching.